Hello, friends, and welcome to the Wisdom for Life broadcast. This is Pastor Glenn with another episode that we hope will bless you. How many of you want a strong marriage? You want a strong marriage? Amen. That's not what I'm preaching on today. But, I, but hey, if you want a strong marriage, here's how to do it, all right? My wife this morning was standing in the bathroom. She's in my way. So uh, I said, get out of the way. And she said, why don't you get me out of the way? I said, don't you know these guns can still pick you up? She said, you'll hurt your back. I said, why don't you step yourself out in the living room of the parsonage and see what these guns can do? So we went into the living room. She jumped up into my arms, and I hurt my back. No, I, <laughs> no, I picked her up, didn't I? But, didn't I? I? I still got it. Amen. Has nothing to do with the sermon today. Just want you to have a strong marriage. Uh, Genesis 26, please. That's what we're talking about. Genesis 26. Let's look at, uh, let's start at verse, verse 12. Turn to your neighbor and say, what, what's the matter? Some of you are already looking at me like... Come on, relax, <laughs> chillax, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say, can you dig it? Okay, like four of you did, that's great. Hey, if you were raised in the 70s, how many of you were raised in the 70s? You know, you know what I'm talking about, 70s, 80s? I used to say, can you dig it? And we, we used to say other things in the 80s too, like, you know, like psych. You remember that, psych? Three people in the back, that's good. I must be getting really old. I want to talk about digging it this morning. Amen. Genesis 26. Let's look at verse 12 here. Uh, that year, Isaac's crops were tremendous. Uh, one version uh, says, in the same year, he sowed his seed and reaped a harvest. In the same, come on, in the same year. How many of you know he's blessed? How many of you know when you get blessed, somebody starts hating? When you get blessed, here comes jealousy. Don't worry about that. Don't waste it. Don't waste any emotional energy on emotional vampires. They, they, they come into your life only to drain you. When you get blessed, that doesn't mean everybody's going to throw you a party. Everybody's going to jump on board with you and say, oh, it's so nice. You're so blessed. I like that you're blessed, too. Here's some cake. They're not going to do that, man. So in the same year, he reaps a harvest. Look at this, a hundred times more grain than he planted. For the Lord had what? Blessed him. He became a rich man, and his wealth only continued to grow. He acquired large flocks of sheep and goats and great herds of cattle, many servants. Soon the Philistines became happy for him. That's what it says right there. They were happy. The enemy is happy. Hey, listen, you need to show up next Wednesday night. I'm going to be teaching on angels. And I'm going to teach you on fallen angels and how fallen angels do not like you and why they don't like you. You represent the image of God. There was a moment where those angels began to follow an angel that became jealous of you and didn't care for you. And, and the fact that you're an image bearer and he ain't. <laughs> right? There is a moment where Satan said, hey, I'm in charge of worship. And then you go and you make all of these people who give a worship that I can't give. Okay, nobody's here. That's not even in the notes, so no charge. All right. And they filled up all of Isaac's wells. They start dumping in the wells with earth. And these were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father, Abraham. How many of you know there's a generation that, gone, that has gone before us that has already dug the wells. We don't need to, listen, we don't need to dig new wells. We, we need the old wells. We need the old stuff, not the new stuff. There's a generation that went before us, even in this church, that had experiences with God. Listen, he didn't even, he didn't uh, even rename the wells. He gave them the same name that his father gave. How many of you know the old wells, like, come on, spirit filling? The old wells, like sound doctrine. The old wells, like holiness. What's that? <laughs> holiness. Consecration. Sanctification. Old wells. We don't need new wells. We don't need a new message. We need the old message. 
give me that old time. And Abimelech asked Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you become too rich and powerful for us. So Isaac moved to the Gerar Valley and lived there instead. He reopened the wells of his father that, had, that he had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac named them using the names Abraham had given them. His shepherds also dug wells in the Gerar Valley and found a gushing spring. But then the local shepherds came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said. They argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well argument. Or if we, if, if we see it in the Hebrew or the Aramaic, it's Essek. Strife. How many of you want to live with people that are, are in strife? Yeah, how many of you love to argue? Now be honest. Some people love to argue over anything. I don't like to be in the presence of people that want an argument. I just don't, man, because life's too short, right? And plus, hey, here's the deal. The, the bottom line is I don't care to have to be right every time about everything. The only thing I'm concerned about, listen to me, the only thing I'm concerned about is am I with the right people? And am I in the right place? And do I have his right plan? Listen, I don't, care. I don't have to be right about anything else. We're, we're, in a, we're in a generation or a culture today where everything is about rights. Everybody's got a right to this, a right to that. And listen, don't infringe upon my rights. Listen, if you want to argue, you're not the right people. If you want to debate all the time, listen, you want to change lives, do it with love. Not with an argument. These foolish and pretentious things that we do. Well, let me, let, let me try to win the debate. A debate has never saved anybody. Listen, people get changed by love, man. Yeah, so, so it was an argument because they had argued with him. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again, there was a fight over it, so he named it Opposition. This would be Sitna, or this would be Opposing. How many of you want to stay in a place for very long that there's constant Opposition. Just constantly, just, every, every time you try to do something, there, there, there's, there's, another, there's another person that wants to oppose you or stand against you. That's what it was. Now watch, it says, abandoning that one, they dug another well, and the local people finally left him alone. Oh, praise God, somebody's leaving me alone. So Isaac renamed it Room Enough. You know, the Bible goes on to say that just after that well, he, they dig another well, and they, they name it Beersheba, which means seven wells. How many of you know when you get to a place where there's room enough for God to move in your life, that God doesn't just stop there. He's the God of more than enough. He's an overflowing God. The next place after the place where there's room enough, there's seven wells. Now, now I want you to count before this place, this, this Rehoboth, this place, just two wells he gave up. But in return, I, I don't know if you can do the math better than me. But in return, he got eight wells. Come on, church. I don't know. Would you want two? Or does eight sound better? Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, eight is better than two. Help me, God. Help me to, God, not be a contentious person. Help me, God, to not constantly fight on every single hill and die over every single thing. Yes, I'm to carry my cross, Lord. But I need to pick my battles. I need to choose my wells. And not everything is worth the emotional, spiritual, and physical en uh, energy, Lord, to fight over. Help us, God, this morning to choose the right people, the right place, the right plan, the right well. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Can I give you a couple things for your notes, and then you don't have to take any more notes if you don't want to. What a honking deal, man. It wasn't rhetorical, Linda, but thank you. Here it comes. I want to talk to you about how to dig this morning. And I want to talk to you about how to dig in an environment to get to where your blessing is. And if you could just see dig as an acronym, it's simply this. Dig intentionally towards good. Just keep digging. And if you don't find it where you're at, dig somewhere else. Keep digging. 
keep digging. In other words, sometimes God wants to bless you first by removing something. See, we think success and blessing is something that comes into our life. But God says, if you're willing to dig, if you're willing to start by something being removed, then I can get you to a place to where you can be blessed with living water. So along with that, for your notes, here's another one. What needs to be removed, Pastor? How many of you learned your vows in school? A-E-I-O-U. Sometimes why? Don't steal my message. And it's okay. It's okay. A, attitudes. Attitudes. What needs to be removed in our life so that we can get to blessings? Sometimes we've got to remove attitudes. God is faithful to bring the living water. But you got to pick up a shovel. And sometimes you got to start with your own attitude. The Bible says that your, your heart is a wellspring of life. Guard it. And sometimes when you don't guard it, it gets filled with dirt. And the dirt starts with a bad attitude. Be willing to remove attitudes. A-E-I-O-U. What's E? Think about this for a minute. What could be in your life that would represent E? Oh, evil. Evil would never be in me. Somebody said evil. Wow. Evil could never be in our heart, right? Sometimes you've got to let God expose things that are evil. You've got to let God show you things that don't belong. And you've got to be willing to give it up. Let's go to the next vow. Idols. I. Idols. Do we have idols in our life? You betcha, just buy a new car. I bought a new car one time in my life. One time in my life. I washed it every other day. And my wife one day was like, do you love me more than you love that car? Do you love Jesus more than you love that car? I mean, really. It was just, I was obsessed with it being clean. And you know, sometimes, whatever's taking up the most of your passion and your heart and your time, it's an idol, man. How about O? What could O be? How about old methods? How about old religious methods? Well, this is the way we've always done it, Pastor. Really? Nobody's getting saved. Nobody got saved over that anymore. So sometimes you get out a shovel. Hey, this is the way I've always loved my spouse. Well, listen, the spouse you met isn't the spouse you're with now. Hello, you, 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 you know, you know, there's this little thing called change and it happens about every five to ten years and you wake up next to somebody and you're like, who are you? you? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't been married long enough. You'll get there. Hang on. White knuckle it. You'll get there. You'll get there. You might have to change your methods. You might have to change the way you do things. The methods aren't important. The message is. Just change it. Hello? And then we get to you. Maybe it's you. Or why. That starts with you. Thanks, thanks sis. Yeah. Maybe it's me. Sometimes I'm the one that's got to get out of the way. And that's the story of Isaac. He's willing to get out of the way to get to be with the right people in the right place in the right plan. He wasn't so worried about trying to be contestable and trying to prove his rights. Did the wells belong to him? Yes. Well, pastor, come on, come on. When I'm right, I'm right. Yeah, but you aren't getting anywhere with that. And listen, do you really want a well that somebody's going to come and keep dumping in? Is it really worth it? Is it re- You've got to ask yourself sometimes. Is it worth it? Sometimes you see people, they... They change positions in ministry. And then you go, well, why do they do that? Because they get to a point, listen, where there's so much argument and and contest and opposition, they want to be fruitful for the Lord, so they move. You, You understand that. It could never be the congregation, right? Some of you are getting mad. It's always the pastor. It's always the leader. Sometimes it's us. Watch this, watch this. Um... 
We can, we can face opposition, and sometimes when we face that opposition, instead of going, that's just the enemy wanting to dump in my well, we start to blame the people in our life that are there to bless us. Right? So we start thinking, well, if I could just have a better church, or if I could just have a better pastor, or if I could just have a better spouse, oh, you'd never say that. Or if I could just have a better place, right? Right? Did you know Judas had the best pastor there ever was? Did you know Judas had the best teacher there ever was? Did you know Judas had the best, had the best uh, 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 team around him and that leader that there ever was? And still he failed. So what's my excuse? Sometimes it's me. The whole world isn't conspiring. Listen, can everybody be wrong about you? Oh, it's so very, very quiet. Okay, I'll let you off the hook now. I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. But if there's a pattern, maybe you got to get out of the way. Huh? Come on. I'll bring a blankie next week and a big pacifier. <laughs> preaching too hard, pastor. So what did Abraham do? Abraham dug these wells. Abraham dug them. Sometimes the blessings come from above and they come down like rain. But if you want a multi-generational blessing, you've got to be willing to dig. That means you go lower. That, that means you don't remain where you're at. Sometimes God takes you to a lower place. And I want you to see in the story, not only does he have to redig these wells, but he has to start in a valley. It, it looks backwards. It looks counterintuitive. It's paradoxical. Why, God, I'm going the wrong way. I thought, God, you were here to bless me. Blessing means goes up, 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 God, right? Listen, anytime God builds something, he digs a hole. Anytime, it, listen, if you want to build something, it starts with a hole. And you think, what am I doing in the middle of this hole? This can't be a blessing. And God's saying, that's exactly where I want you to start. Listen, if you're at your lowest point, you're never, never, never any closer than you could be to living water. Why am I in this hole? The hole's a well. Oh, can't be. I want you to see something too. He had to move from well to well. And this is what we do. Sometimes we think places are blessed. God isn't blessing places. God is blessing people. So you might go from this hole to this hole, and you land in this hole, and you say, well, it's another hole. This must mean the rest of my life is going to be this way. No. Uh-uh. Mm. Why is it like this? Why is it like this? Because it just seems like sometimes the trials and the tests and the tribulations make us think what's happening in the moment will be the rest of my life. And Aunt Jemima would say, put this on your pancakes. What you're experiencing in one moment does not mean that that's going to be the rest of your life. This too shall pass. And when it does, you'll be blessed. You just got to keep digging. Say, I don't, I don't like digging. That's your job. His job is the living water. Your job is to dig. Abraham said, hey, I want to be a blessing to the generations. So he dug wells, not just waited for rain. Some of you, I want my blessing. I'm going to sit here on the shore until it comes in. No, God's saying maybe you, need to, maybe you need to swim out to that ship. Or maybe you need to build a ship. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children, children. You know what a good church is? You know what a good church is? A good church is a blessing that has for good people and their children's children. You know when God's blessing a church? You see the generations. Not one gen. This is a problem in America today. I'm just, I'm just going to get on my soapbox, and this is opinion time. Where, that's fun, isn't it? Some of you are like, Pastor, a majority of what you say is your opinion. So what? The one you're stuck with. You walk into some churches today, and it's all young or all old. Do you see what's happening in America today? Not only are we dividing over cultural and racial differences, we're dividing the generations. 
Because we're choosing a methodology that only reaches one, and we're not teaching the younger generation the great things that the older generations have already discovered. We're attempting to dig different wells. And God says, that's not a, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I want them all to come together, man. There's nothing better than to hear kids in the church. And there's nothing better than to see somebody under 40 hang out with someone over 80. Amen, Amen huh? Amen. Let me see you do it. I double dog dare you. You say, well, I may not like the restaurant they go to. You'll get over that. Hang out with them. They'll bless you. So he didn't dig new wells. He didn't name them anything different. Looks like his daddy, or his great-grandfather, rather, went through some stuff that, he, that he's going to go through himself. How many of you know that, that, that maybe somebody older than you have, has already went through that and already got the lumps for it? So I guess there's two ways to learn in life. If you're skeptical, I'm sorry. There's two ways to learn in life. One is you can go out and attend the school of hard knocks and get your own lumps, or you can hang out with somebody older than you that's already failed in that area and took the lumps so you don't have to. Now, who's smart? Who's smart? You've got to hang out with somebody older than you. You've got to learn. You've got to sit at their feet. You've got to humble yourself. You've got to be teachable. You've got to be willing to engage people that are older than you and younger than you. And Isaac was smart enough to go, listen, Grandpa's already been through this. I'm not going to sit here and go through what he went through. I'm learning something. I'm moving on. I don't even know moving is okay. Listen, I, I don't want to stay in a, in a place where people don't celebrate me. I'm not going to stay in a place where people abuse me. God did not die on the cross to make you a doormat. Come on. This is not Christianity. For you to lay down for every bully in your life. Hello? Sometimes what you determine to walk away from determines where God can bring you to. Sometimes you just got to walk away because the people you're with are a bully. Can I tell you what Jesus said? Jesus said this, and it's awesome. He said, listen, when people insult you, ignore them. Just ignore them. You know what's really, really powerful? I've given up three things in my life, and this is powerful. Ignoring the ignoring insults is powerful. Can I teach you something? If you ever do this to me, I'll, I'll know you're doing it. <laughs> but, but, but as soon as somebody starts to be contentious with you, as soon as somebody starts to get in your face and want to argue with you or be opposition or just be weird about stuff, make a big deal out of nothing, just get up and leave. Just say, I love you, God bless. I'm excusing myself. And walk away. That is so honking <laughs> powerful. It's powerful. You don't have to sit there and take that. You don't, you don't, this is what Isaac did. It's wisdom. He just, he just said, hey, I, I'm going to, you're insulting me. You're, you're oppressing me. You're trying to quarrel with me. I don't need all that. I, I'll, I'll, get to, I'll get to eight wells and give up the two. Don't make a fight over everything. Just say, listen, I'm going to ignore this insult. Do you know what really, and it, the, the point isn't to try to make people mad, but do you know what will, you're going to need to pray for them when you do, because it will infuriate them that you won't fight back. It, it just, that's infuriating, because it leaves, somebody in, it leaves somebody sitting in their own mess, and just come back when they're peaceful again, and just say, hey, I missed you, let's have a burger. <laughs> Hello? I, I know I'm preaching to everybody else. I, I know, I know. So Abraham dug these wells. Isaac learned something from it. He moved on. He said, hey, I've got to be with the right people. I've got to be in the right place. I've got to have the right plan, man. I want to be with God. Not the wrong people. I don't want to be with strifeful people. That's Essex. That's the first well. I don't want to be with people that are constantly opposing the things that God wants to do in my life. Talk a little bit about Opposition. We may look at opposition and say, well, maybe I'm not serving God. That's why it's there. No, I'm telling you, 
<laughs> I'm telling you, if you are serving God, that's why opposition's there. You're asking for it. Do the right thing, suffer the consequences. Do the right thing anyway, even though people don't like you. This isn't a popularity contest. The best man died on the cross for it. it it's not about being popular, and it's not about checking to see where the wind blows. I love this. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, Paul says this very poignantly. He says, there is a great door of opportunity open for me, but in the same place, there's great opposition. In the same place of a great door of opportunity is opposition. Opportunity, opposition, same place. If you're, if you're constantly thinking that opposition is not something God allows, and it's a cue of somehow that you're not with the Lord, then you're going you're gonna to talk yourself out of the best things that God has ever brought to your life. You're going to talk yourself out of it. Just like I talk myself out of going to the gym just about every single day. Because <laughs> there's opposition. I talk myself out of this. You know, I just, well, I don't have time, and there's so many people that need me. And that's why you're seeing more and more of me, aren't you? That's... <laughs> Listen, the pressure is a sign that promotion is coming. The opposition is a sign that there's opportunity. David realized this. Notice this. He was anointed to be king, but then went back to shepherding. People didn't care there was an anointing on his head. People didn't go out throughout the kingdom and say, Hey, psst, psst, come here. That guy's anointed. Nobody cared. Big honking deal. Until Goliath showed up, and David showed up too. And then when there was opposition, there was opportunity. And as soon as he slew that giant, everybody was talking about his anointing. Listen, here's the thing that I see today. Everybody wants to be famous in the church, but nobody wants to face opposition. Everybody wants to be a hero. But nobody wants to sacrifice themselves up against a giant. Once he faced that giant and whooped him, then it was like, I, he's anointed. Listen, if you want people to know just how anointed you are, why don't you, face, why don't you face that addiction in your life and beat it in the name of Jesus? Let the same people come back up to you and say, there's something real about your God. Because up until today, every time at break time, I've seen you do this, and now you've got a Bible in your hand. What's going on? Still very quiet. Hey, he faced other giants. You know, Saul was one too. The Bible says he stood head and shoulders above the rest. Right? And, and one giant he had to face personally, the other giant, he let God deal with. You know, some, some, some wells you're going to have to walk away from, and even though that well belongs to you, you're going to have to say, God, you're going to you're gonna have to vindicate me. You're going to have to deal with it. God, it's, it's going to be something that you're going to have to help me with. But I'm too busy living and living for you, to get all tangled up in this mess. Are you hearing me this morning? Now, now, now I wonder, because, because we've gotten to know each other over the last 18 months, and we've all, ta and I have too, we've talked about stuff that are just petty. Come on, I've told you before. I've told you, haven't I? Small potatoes. Don't sweat the petty stuff. And don't pet the sweaty stuff. <laughs> oh, you're so clean. You've never had a drop of sweat in your life. Thanks for coming to church today, oh, clean one. <laughs> hmm. So, so, so David recognizes that every time there's opposition, that's the very last thing that happens before he walks into opportunity. Every time there's something that stands powerfully against me, there's also opportunity for promotion. If this looks like a setback, it's a setup. If I'm in the midst of a low place, it's the very last thing 
that happens before God brings his abundant blessing. And this is how kings think. Godly people, royal people, a royal priesthood thinks this way. Don't get all wrapped up in dumb little fights. Next well he gets to, about to close here. He gets to call this place room enough. Room enough. Listen, before he got there, though, he had to face the well of argument. Before he got there, though, he had to face the well of opposition. Then he got to be at the well of room enough. See, I just think that most people give up digging too soon. They just give up too soon. It's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I see a pattern here. And the pattern is saying that I'm not blessed. Don't look for patterns. Look for presence. Is the Spirit of God with you? Are you with the Lord? That's a better question. He is with you. Are you with the Lord? Then don't worry about what well you're at. You're going to find people, they're at the well of room enough, and you're going to be, you're going to be playing the comparison game. You're going to be looking at them, and they're going to, you're going to be saying, you're just about at Bathsheba, man. You're Bathsheba, you've got seven wells, and you've got the well of room enough, and I'm way back here at argument. Yeah. And you're going to be, you're going to be jealous of those people. Listen, you've got, you got to make your bones too. You've got, to, you've got to put your time in. I used to do that in the ministry. I, I had some pastor friends. They've been at their church 10, 15 years. But I didn't see that. Okay? I saw all the abundant blessings, and they were at the well of room enough. And I was at the well of argument. Not to say that I'm at that well now. But stay with me. And I said, hey, why, God, why is God picking on me? Why is God blessing you? And not blessing me. You don't ever do that, right? Okay, just me. Just me. I just do it. Why is God blessing your marriage and not mine? Why do you get to live in that house? Here's what kids do. They look at their parents, and they think as soon as they leave home, they they should have everything their parents have. That's trouble right there. That's trouble. Because you ain't put in the time. You haven't sacrificed. You haven't been through the well of argument. Come on. You haven't been through the well of opposition yet. You've got to do your time too. When kids think, well, pff, mom and dad drive that, I should be driving it. And you know, there's plenty of credit companies that help you out with that dumb idea. They'll help you out. The enemy would love to help you out with that. You've got to put your time in. Isaac knew that. He was, he was wise enough to continue on, and he got to this place of room. Say room. When you start to become a person that's after the right people, the right place, and the right plan, listen, you're going you're gonna to you're gonna have to walk away from things, and, and, and you're going to look weak. You're going to look, not weak, you're going to look meek. Meekness ain't weakness. You're going to look like, well, 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 people are pushing me around, man. Are they, or, 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 or is God moving you up? I don't want to get stuck at the well of argument. Well, Pastor Glenn, that's not right. You know, I know, this belongs to me, and that belongs to me, and God gave this to me, and it, it's been mine, and I work for it. Really? Okay. All right. Do you know that God could probably figure that out better than you could? Really? Are you really going to, is it worth your peace? Is it worth your peace? Listen, you all think you got this figured out. Wait till we have another fellowship meal here. No, I watch things. And we'll get all up in a tizzy on who's first in line and how many dips of the, how many dips of the potatoes somebody, come on now. That's a dumb well. Did you see they took three dips of potatoes? Well, let them eat. Well, how many bags of chips did they get? So, who cares? You need more chips? I'll go to the store and get them. No, you, you're laughing because you haven't been at these things. I've been at them for 31 years. I have seen the dumbest wells. 
Might be some pride in somebody. God opposes the proud, gives grace to the humble. The Bible also says that if you'll humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he'll lift you up. You might be in the valley right now digging a well, which is a low place, even going lower. But hey, you just hold on. You keep digging. God's going to bring you to a place where you're going to have a well where there's room enough. And then you're going to have seven wells on top of that. And eight to two ain't bad. Actually, eight to two is way better. Say better. So don't right now that it always be this way. Don't start looking at the people around you and thinking that whatever they're going through or whatever they've got that you don't got is something to be fighting over. It's not. And actually, I want to tell you this. The Bible says, as much as it be with you, live at peace with all men. As much as you can, live at peace with all men. You don't want to stay at that well anyways. They might spit in it. Are you hearing me? You know, sometimes I use, I use derogatory things to get you to wake up. So if you fall asleep and I say spit in a well, it's because you're sleeping. I want you to understand me here. Sometimes we're fighting over things that don't, don't matter. And we're making a big deal out of things that don't matter. And, and, and we're wanting to talk with people about things and we're wanting to confront people about things that don't matter. Just go to another well. And let God... Bless you. Let God bless your socks off. That's why you wear two pairs, right? Let him, let him change the situation by you being patient. Uh, speaking of patient and, and, and how God leads people through some things, how many of you know that sometimes you ask for a healing and it don't come right away? That don't mean it isn't coming. doesn't mean it isn't there. Sometimes you ask for a blessing and it don't come right away. What's God doing? Why, why, God, why God make me dig? Because your character has to match your calling. And the, dig, the digging causes your character to increase. Like my brother Wayne and I, we hang out. And the short time that I've hung out with him, he's been through some, I thought I was a bad guy. Dude, you've done. But I get a burger with this guy. And I recognize what God has done in him. God's brought him to wells I've not been at yet. I learned from him. He's a little bit older than me too, right? I think so. And so he's been through some stuff. And so I become his friend. And when I sit and I listen to him, I'm like, wait a minute, Lord, I'm not here to teach him. He's teaching me. I'm learning how to be patient because I hang out with my brother. I'm learning how to worship God again because I hang out with my brother. And, you know, he's been through some of the same stuff I have, but he ain't bitter. And I look at him and I say, man, I can learn from you. I'm going to humble myself. Pastor don't have anything to do with it. You know, he's in my life for a purpose and I love you. You're my friend. You're my friend. Why don't you do stuff like that? Why are you hanging out with the same people? Why are you hanging out with the same people? They're arguing with you most of the time anyway. Deny it. Why are you hanging out with the same people? All right, you're not scared, are you? You're not afraid, are you? you know, I, I, I love the fact that, you know, I go visit people that nobody knows attends this church, but they can't attend this church physically. And when I get there, they say, yeah, uh, Allison Headley, Headley's already been here with Micah and, and fed me, and we played ball together, and it was fun, and it blessed me. Here's somebody in their 80s, and here's somebody in their 20s, right? Okay. And, and, and we're, 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 we're redigging wells. Here's what's going to happen in the month of, at the end of February and the, the whole of March. I'm going to challenge this church to become relational. Not, not just hang out after the It's been great. So you don't leave as soon as the sermon's over. That's awesome. But, but I, want, I want to see you hang out with people that are different than you, that are older than you, younger than you. And if you won't do it, I'll come put a sign in your yard. <laughs> I'm serious about this. And we're going to have life groups. And Chad Lee's going to help me with that. And we're going to get together in groups, and we're going to pray for each other. And we're going to love each other. And we're going to redig wells together. And we're going to be a family of God. And we're going to see the generations come together. And listen, we're going to shout together. We're going to cry together. We're going to bless together. 
We're going to charge hell with squirt guns together. We're going to be the family of God.